What's up everyone, it's Woody. Today I'm gonna show you how this little thing can stop your car from starting. So stay tuned. So today's video is probably gonna be pretty short and sweet. Um, there's really not a whole lot to it. There's really no tools required. All you have to do is get the part. But this little button right here sits inside of your pedal. So when you press the brake pedal or the clutch pedal on your car, this sits up towards the top and engages a switch. So when that switch is pressed in, it tells the car that those pedals are not pressed. So when you push in your brake pedal, when this leaves that switch so that it opens up and allows current to flow, it tells the car to turn on your brake lights. So if this switch is missing in that little hole where it goes, the switch just pushes through the hole and doesn't know that the pedal is not pressed in. So your brake lights stay on. That could cause you to actually have your battery die from draining it by just leaving your brake lights on. So if you ever notice that your brake lights are stuck on or you go out to start your car and you realize it's dead, and after you jump it, you realize my brake lights are on. This switch is probably the part of what it is. So this little button activates that switch. Um, on the clutch pedal, likewise, this is actually what happened to me. I was on my way to Piedmont Drift and uh, made it there, went through, enjoyed the day. You guys saw the video. On the way home, stopped part way. Everything was running great. Went in, grabbed some food, came back out, went to start the car, nothing happened. Starter wouldn't turn over. I wasn't hearing a click. I wasn't hearing multiple clicks. Nothing that indicates normally that your battery is just low or that the starter's failing or the solenoid's not engaging. It just wasn't doing anything. So, I went through and, and tried to think of all the things I could test. Um, when I turned the car on, all the electronics came on. Everything looked like it was operating the way it was supposed to. When I turned on the headlights, they weren't dim, so I knew I had plenty of juice in the battery. And uh, tried to check on the starter, but when we turned it, it wasn't even clicking or making any noise like it was trying to engage that solenoid. So when I came back to get in the car, I saw this little thing sitting on the floorboard and being that I've been through this probably four, five, six times already, I know exactly what it was. So if you see one of these things, it looks almost like a little piece of crayon. But the outer edge is kind of chipped around so it fell back through the hole. Um, most times that I've seen it, that piece actually crumbles entirely and it looks like a bunch of little broken pieces of crayon laying on your floorboard, but it's a hard plastic. So if you see that sitting there, that's a telltale sign that you probably lost that button. You need to go and replace it. So now that we've gotten our new button pieces, this is gonna be what sits in the stopper. I'm gonna show you underneath the dash and let you see a little bit about what it looks like and how it works. So under here, when we're looking at the clutch, you can see on the clutch pedal, there's a hole right here. And that's where that button used to sit. So it would sit in there like that from the back side. And that sends a signal to this switch right here to tell the car if the clutch is depressed. So when you push in the clutch, you can see that hole lines up with that switch. And that little button tells the car that the clutch is depressed all the way. If that's not pushed in as a safety measure, the car will not start. And likewise, if you look at the brake pedal, there is the opposite direction. So that this little button sits in that hole, but on the brake pedal, it actually presses the switch when the brake is not pressed down. So when you press the brake, it opens up that switch to turn on your brake lights. So that one is a lot harder to get to, and thankfully that's not the one we're doing today. So like I said, this is gonna be pretty quick and simple. So let's get started. In this pack, we've got two separate buttons. One of them is a white one that's a very hard plastic. 
and one of them is a black one that's a softer rubber. I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get it to work with the rubber one because I feel like that one's gonna last a lot longer than the hard plastic. So we're gonna go ahead and try to insert this and that should get this job done hopefully. And it looks like that is actually going to be a little too small. So we're gonna try the other one. And hopefully, no, that is also too small. Looks like both of those are a little too small. However, if you get back to your car, it's not starting, either your battery's dead and your tail lights you found out were stuck on, or if you depress the clutch and nothing's happening even though your power looks good, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the floorboard. Now I've come back, like I've said before, and seen this several times, but you'll see either a little button that looks like this, or you'll see what almost looks like little crayon pieces crushed on your floor that would make up the whole piece. So these two pieces that you see in my hand are what actually fell off of the outside edges of these that held it in place. If you look at that, you can see there's a lip and that sits in there. And on some sides, that lip is gone. And that's why this fell through and was no longer working. So I need to go out and find the right size. Um, another thing that you'll find, some people are okay with actually using a dime and they'll take JB Weld and a dime and melt that onto the back side of the pedal so that it's always in place. It's not gonna wear out. It's not gonna break up and fall off. I'm not a big fan of that method for this car because I want it to be all original and it's kind of uh, a Sunday drive car. So I'm gonna try to find the right part. If it was one of my other cars that I didn't have as much concern about that with, I'd probably go with that method because it's, it's in essence a permanent fix. So you don't have to worry about that piece breaking. Most times when you see this, at least in my experience, it's gonna be on an older car. Um, the five or six times that I've dealt with it, it's all been on cars ranging from 88 through about 94. So you'll find that's the most common area. You'll see that I'm guessing in more recent years they realized that hey, this is a bad design and stopped using it. But uh, this car is a 93, so it still sees that issue. So let me see if I can find something else we can get in there and we'll see if we can wrap this up. Sometimes when things don't go as planned, you have to make do with what you've got. So this is by no means the proper method for doing this. But what I'm looking for is something that'll last me until I can get to the Nissan dealer to get the right part. This is a interior clip from a car that has a flat button that's not gonna be too big. And this will not fit properly, but it will keep it in place until I get the right part. So you can see there, it still slides around, but it gives us the end goal of depressing that button. You can see the switch there, and the tab there, so that it presses that button in place when you depress the clutch pedal. That is the end goal. That's what the car needs so that it can start. So that's gonna finish the job for now. Based on the fact that I am trying to make sure I get this video posted on Wednesday and I don't know that I'll have a chance to get over the Nissan dealer before then. I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the time being so you can see what it does. When you're feeding that in, you wanna feed it from the side that the button is on because whenever you press the button, whenever you press the pedal in or in the brake case, whenever you release the pedal and it hits that button, it's gonna be putting force on it trying to remove it otherwise. So you wanna make sure that you feed the button in from the side that it's gonna make contact with the sensor. So. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this has been helpful. Sorry I didn't have the right parts, but uh, this will hold this over so I can at least drive the car until then without having to get down there and manually press the button with my finger to start the car. So if you ever do have an issue like this and it's not your brakes, it is just the clutch, you can literally just reach down, press the clutch pressure switch, turn the key with the other hand, and that'll at least get the car started so you can get where you need to go. It's just a major pain because you have to get on the ground and get underneath the dash to be able to reach that. That's all I've got for today. 
I did go around and check a few other auto parts stores in the local area to see if I could find it without having to go all the way up to the other side of the city to get that from the Nissan dealership and didn't have any luck. When you're installing it, you will need to give it a little bit of force to get it in place because it's a bit stubborn going in, but once it's in there, it'll just stay right where it's supposed to once it's seated in that groove. It'll give you a little bit of a pop. Um, notice when I was going through some of the footage that the backlighting and the audio was a bit garbage, so I apologize for that. I'm still learning on getting some of that stuff worked out, and I probably need to get a new mic. The other one seems like it's giving up the ghost, so appreciate it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned on everything, and I hope you have a great day.